It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly Media Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden, and this is 5.45 Live. Let's take a look at what's coming up on deck tonight. We're going to start by talking a little bit about this upcoming select board meeting, briefly on all the happenings there, including uh, their plans to potentially suspend their rules of conduct. We'll uh, get a look at Bernie's town hall meeting on veterans issues uh, from the BFW this past weekend. And of course, Slow Living Summit, Strolling of the Heifers is uh, all the buzz around town. We'll get in on it as well, get you some footage and prep for BCTV's own coverage of it. All that and more. Remember, we do it in 15 minutes. We can probably even do it in a little bit less for all you uh, attention span ravaged folks out there, myself included. So make sure you stick with us right here on 545 Live. Aside from the question of whether or not we're televised or not, I would say that probably we, I would, I would recommend to not increase the total budget by that small amount. We'll um, find a way to fund that. Welcome back to this June 4th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news here. That's footage of Brattleboro Town School District Chair Margaret Atkinson responding at this spring's Brattleboro Representative Town Meeting to a request that the board budget for the videography and broadcast of their meetings on BCTV, a request that has solidified into programming less than a full fiscal year later, as tomorrow's regular meeting will mark the third of its kind to make its way to BCTV's government and education sister channel channel 10 and so subsequently uh, to our video on demand as well all right uh, now for anyone looking to uh, attend the meeting in person it'll be held tomorrow at 5 p.m. at the offices of early education services 130 Bird Street that's right here in Brattleboro now speaking of meetings we do have a uh, Brattleboro select board meeting coming up in just a matter of minutes on that uh, government and education sister channel channel 10 I was just talking about uh, starts at 6 15 p.m. Uh, we'll get WTSA's Tim Johnson to kick it off uh, by reading the upcoming agenda and then we'll launch into it uh, but first uh, let's launch into our story about it as well. News that three-year member Ken Schneck would be vacating his seat following the board's June 19th meeting got some extra airplay this week after board chair David Gardenstein reported to the reformers Howard Weiss Tisman that a consult with the town attorney Robert Fisher had yielded a recommendation that the board seek to temporarily suspend the rules of conduct that currently prohibit the board from interviewing for replacements prior to the vacating of a seat. A rule, says Gardenstein, generates an unnecessary lapse in board efficiency. The Brattleboro Select Board operates on the rules of conduct that we reconsider and adopt at the uh, first business meeting of the new board. Those were circulated uh, to select board members as part of the materials. Again, that select board meeting will kick off live at 6.15 p.m. on BCTV Channel 10, and it'll be available either later tonight or first thing tomorrow on our website, brettlebrotv.org, to stream along with all other local meetings at your leisure. All right, we're going to move on. As chair in Washington of the Senate Committee on Veteran Affairs, Vermont U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders has made clear in the past months his feelings over the country's rising problems processing veterans' claims. And while Sanders says this is due in no part to inefficiency on the part of the VA, as the administration continues to post record numbers of claims met, uh, there's no excuse for meeting homebound service members with red tape, he says. A concern that has prompted Vermont's ever-impassioned senator to join Vermont VA directors like Deb M. Durr for a series of town hall meetings on the subject, including one held uh, this past Saturday at the VFW in Brattleboro, where Sanders turned over the mic to any and every vet present with something to share. The reason I'm here today, quite frankly, is we need your help. Uniquely among institutions. The VA is a system that belongs to the veterans. Thanks to hardworking BCTV producer Russ Grabiak, who's uh, grabbed us a couple Bernie clips from his happenings around Brattleboro, as well as other footage at the American Legion, uh, Memorial Day coverage, all of that. So again, uh, great work on the part of Russ Grabiak, uh, getting some of that Bernie stuff. It is, in fact, uh, available in its entirety, that town hall meeting at brattleborotv.org. You can see how many times I say that website over the course of this show. All right, uh, we're going to move on again here back into the stories. Uh, speaking of Saturday, for anyone that found themselves turning back for home from the doors of Brooks Memorial Library as they were closed, uh, a weekend away from the stacks is sure to pay off, as this month the library has rebooted their catalog and website to include titles from the Catamount Library Network Project, 
an open source software backed collaboration that looks to infuse the state's extensive Department of Libraries catalog with the resources of public school and academic libraries, as well as Vermont's current interlibrary loan system, giving Brattleboro residents access to more books than ever. Way more books. Earlier this month, we spoke with Brooks uh, director Jerry Carboni about uh, the project's potential and uh, his hopes for its expansion. When you do a search in the catalog, on the online catalog, you not only see our 75,000 items, but you'll see up to a quarter of a million items, and you'll be able to request those items yourself uh, and have them sent here to the library. Uh, and the hope is in 2014 and 2015 that the consortium will grow by leaps and bounds. So at the end, we perhaps will have all libraries online. All right, we've made it this far in the show without talking about uh, the strolling of the heifers or the slow living summit, but we just can't hold back anymore. It's uh, all the buzz around town as it's set to queue off tomorrow with the slow living summit and of course build up to uh, this Saturday when at 10 a.m. the cows will stroll through downtown. BCTV will be there with our live four camera coverage. You can see it right here on channel eight. And with the summit marking the kickoff to the stroll weekend, registration is set to open in the Latches lobby tomorrow at 2 p.m. followed by an informal workshop across the street in the Plaza Park, where attendees will have the chance to help co-create an undertaking from facilitator Ingrid Brindenberg, dubbed the Peace Labyrinth. And then across the street from there at the Marlboro Graduate Center, the winners of the small business competition will be crowned. That's all followed up uh, by 5 p.m. call for booze and food at the Latches Main Theater reception. And then from there on into the plenary sessions with speakers that include the UN's Robert Rapeto, among others. Now, uh, while the speakers and their topics run a wide range, uh, says committee steering head Kathy Berry, the message at the heart of all of this is the same. We have people here who are going to talk about how they're building, how are they creating sustainable buildings. We have people who are investing money locally, talking about how to do it. Footage courtesy of Luke Stafford and Mondo Media Works, who put together footage on the Slow Living Summit. Now, uh, we'll move on in the stories here, but uh, just quickly again, we'll promote that strolling of the heifers parade. It'll be live on BCTV right here on this channel, channel 8 to 10 a.m. Uh, they're gonna start strolling through, or we're gonna have coverage uh, with hosts Tim Johnson of WTSA and Peter Case, some know, uh, of you know him as Fish from WKVT. Uh, they'll be hosting it. We'll be uh, on Main Street, uh, sure to get you all that footage again. It'll be live. And of course, uh, the night before, they now closed down a section of Main Street between High and Elliott Street uh, for plenty of uh, music, food, fun, vendors, stilt walkers, hula hoops, you name it. And uh, my hardworking co-captain Joe Bushy will be out there to tape another edition of The Pulse of Brattleboro. That's uh, footage you're looking at on the screen now as we get our flashback to footage from previous years. Of course, there'll be a 5.45 Live uh, going on this coming Friday in there as well, and we'll get uh, a live report from downtown. All right, uh, that's enough uh, stroll talk for now, but be sure to join us. Uh, if you can't head out to the street in person on Saturday, find uh, uh, the, all the parade coverage right here at BCTV channel. All right, we'll move on here. This spring's anniversary for the natural disaster and nuclear meltdown in Japan's Fukushima prefecture hit home for many residents here in our own area, grappling with the intricacies of the region's current nuclear disaster evacuation plan especially when the state of affairs in Japan, now more than two years removed from those tragic events, leaves little room for inspiration, something that's prompted eyewitnesses to tell their story. Folks like Chikeko Nishiyama, who was in the Brattleboro area last week to recount her experience during the earthquake and tsunami, residing less than 15 miles from Japan's Fukushima Daiichi reactor at the time of its meltdown. <laughs> People are closer to the reactor than Kawauchi, uh, she heard that they were in panic, but not people in her village because they felt like they were far enough. Translation provided by Chiko Kaneko, who's done her own eyewitness report, which you can find at brettlebrotv.org. Uh, and also thanks to hardworking producer Maria Dominguez, who gets a, a lot of footage here for 545 Live and for BCTV. She uh, did that program as well. All right, it's customary uh, in our midweek edition of 545 Live to promote what's coming up uh, on deck here with our new on BCTV feature. And uh, we're going to start this week by promoting uh, live coverage coming up at 6 p.m. this Thursday. It's another edition of Artists a la Mode from producer Catherine Turnis, who gets uh, artists, poets, bands, painters, and the like uh, here in our downtown studios to talk about their work and perform. In this case, it's the group Wild Nights. Stay inside the line. 
again, that'll be 6 p.m. Uh, right here on Channel 8, live this coming Thursday. And we've got a new edition of Montpelier Connection, uh, the State House program from Wyndham District 4 Rep. Mike Merwicki, who was joined by Wyndham County Senator Jeanette White in our downtown studios this past week to break down all of the happenings in a prolific legislative session that included the passage of over 100 pieces of legislation. They've got the details on all of that. Revenues are only back to where they were in 2008. At the same time, the needs that we're, we're looking at from Vermonters uh, have been increasing right along to 2013 levels. Again, you can find uh, all these programs on either BCTV Channel 8 or Channel 10. Uh, and you can also find them at brattleborotv.org to stream at your leisure, uh, where you can also find uh, our channel guide to see when these are going to play out on BCTV on both our public channel, Channel 8, and our government and education channel, Channel 10. All right, that's enough of the BCTV spiel. That's enough of 545 Live. we got to hoist these cameras down the stairwell to... Uh, the 230 Main Street uh, second floor meeting room of the Brattleboro Select Board. So we can get that live coverage for you coming up at 6.15 p.m. Again, thanks to everybody that makes uh, BCTV and 545 Live tick the way it does. All of our hardworking producers and volunteers. And thanks to you all out there who uh, watch 545 Live, thus making it uh, worth producing. I'm Roland Boyden. Night, everybody. That carries 5-0. The next item on the agenda Sounds like I'm talking about. The next item on the agenda is board assignments.